Hey, uh, guys, uh, how are you doing? I hope you're all well and not stressed. I hope you're all having a good 2022 so far. I'm good. How are you? Good. How are you, Bob? I'm just fa- I'm 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 sick, Will. Everything's great. <laughs> I'm sick in like the cool way, like like Oh, yeah, like, like when we're all, all good here. On your skateboard. Yeah, cuz you know, we went to, you know, I was sick, but now I'm like yeah. I'm sick, dude. Sick. You're sick like this Batman figure I spent too much money on. <laughs> oh my god. Is that <laughs> Bolin? No, it's uh, it says it right there. It's Todd McFarlane. Oh, okay, you gotta do to go to your right a little bit. It, it's it's completely out of focus. <laughs> so this is uh, because it's McFarlane Toys makes the DC figures now. Mm-hmm. Todd McFarlane's like, hey, I drew Batman a couple times, so he makes a whole bunch of figures based on his specific art. This is from Year Two, the third issue. Uh, Batman just standing in the graveyard with a big ass spawn cape. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it has like a regular cape, but you have to take the arms off. You have to put to use this big cape. You have to take his arms off, and to use his regular cape, you got to put his arms back in. That's a little weird. But other than that, <laughs> that, is, that is very weird. How much? How much are we talking? Uh, listen, I don't have to tell you or anyone. You're right. You're right. How much I spent on a action figure. <laughs> Well, I'm going to crack and open. And you can a... still buy at Target.com right now. So you can I'm going to crack open a drink. cold brew right now. All right. All right. So we're late today. Here's what, here's, we got a lot of news to talk about. This is like the biggest news day we've had in months. <laughs> and and suddenly uh, everything went wrong. I went to the studio today to work on a video. I did exactly 0% of that video. I ended up doing a bunch of other stuff. Then it came time to, to stream, and I got in a, a random DLL error that OBS just didn't have a DLL file. So I pulled up some random YouTube video of some go- some kid with like a thick like Indian accent telling me how to fix it, and that didn't work. And then it just made it worse. And then I decided, okay, let me just do a recovery point on my computer because, you know, DLL files, if you do a recovery, it'll fix all that. So I did a recovery and then the computer blue screened and then it just never came back. It just, it's just completely dead now. All because of that one little DLL. I was playing Halo on it an hour yeah. ago. I was playing Halo on that computer just fine. So um, I took an Uber home. And now here I am. And now here we are doing the podcast yeah. about 45 minutes late. I'm not sorry because it's not my fault. We did everything <laughs> we could and we're here anyway. Yeah. Because the so, show must go on. Exactly. Anyway. So don't, don't blame us. Blame Microsoft. And speaking of Microsoft. Speaking of Microsoft, a lot. Oh, wait. Did my audio inputs die, too? Yes, they did. God damn it. This... Every... Then I... Then I came... I took an Uber here. And then... And then my friggin' inputs died. Will, it's not your fault. Hello, Will. It's not your fault. It's my fault. Yeah, hold on a second. That might happen again. See, we speak ill of Microsoft, and then all that shit goes down. Great. Now he tried to fix himself, and it was my fault. I'm just gonna drink my cold brew. What? What? Ha- can you hear me? Yes. If that happens okay. again, don't do anything. It's my fault. Um, okay. The stupid. It, the, it changed my my audio input device randomly again, just out of nowhere. So that all right? How did it do that, and also do it to me? Because I lost you in my headphones. No, no, no. And then I had to unplug my mixer. No, no, no! It, it 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 only did it to me because uh, okay, my audio, you know, my input and output's the same, so it just right, it just died, it just okay. went out. Oh God, Will is out of sync. D- ban yourself from this chat. <laughs> <laughs> Must be your first podcast, buddy. Like that's the least of like that's like that's the biggest issue we got today. All yeah. right, <laughs> listen, thank you 
to all of our supporters. I also, guys, yeah. I haven't streamed in like a week. So, well, I haven't streamed since the last podcast. So we're going to have a lot of supporters to thank. Uh, but we do, have, we will be talking all about how Microsoft just acquired the entire world of gaming. Um, yes, the, the entire world of Warcraft of gaming. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> that you didn't put in the title, like I said. I know, but no. Uh, Ohio Blitz, thank you for the 11 months. Hey, Bob, keep up the good work. Thanks, dude. Jeffrey Sorensen, thank you for the year. It says I've subbed for 12 months. That's almost a whole year. It is almost a whole year. <laughs> Dante Mirror, thanks for 29 months. Hello, Will. Hello, Bob. 29 months of the Wolf Brothers. That's too many months. Yeah. But I appreciate it. The, the Laurelin Villager, thank you for the 13 months. When will you guys announce Microsoft acquired you too? I almost thought about making the title or or the at least like the go live notification. Microsoft has acquired us, but people would take it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Spoopy Girl, thanks for gifting a sub. Rye Bread, thanks for the two months. Spankwise, thanks for the five months. Uh, Richie to fly thanks for the five months. I'm ready for the news. Give it to me while well, you got to hold on for us. To also, thank I am yeah. Go Gozev for the prime. Spoopy Girl, Spoopy Girl for the two more gifted. Razzle Jazzle for the gift of sub. Oh, Svald to go. Thank you for the prime. Dark type, thanks for the 100 bits. Thorvin Dwarf, thank you for the seven months. And Stevie, thanks for the six months. Keep up the great work. Thanks, bros. Thank you, everybody. If you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch. And then you get a free sub. I turned on my heat and now it's too hot. Now I'm all worked up. <laughs> all right. So what happened today, Will? Uh, well, I thought I honestly, when I saw the image, I thought it was Photoshopped because I first saw it on Twitter. <laughs> and I'm like, and it was like eight in the morning. I'm like, what is this fool doing? But no, yeah, it is I true. woke up and Microsoft. Twitter exploded. <laughs> Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard in a deal valued at nearly $70 billion. Billion with a B. Yeah. Following reports, Microsoft has officially announced it has acquired Activision Blizzard in a deal valued at nearly $70 billion. This is Microsoft's biggest acquisition in history of any type, and it is the biggest gaming acquisition in history by a huge margin. Over the decades, the studios and teams that make up Activision Blizzard have earned vast wellsprings of joy and respect from billions of people all over the world, Xbox boss Phil Spencer said. We are, we are incredibly excited to have the chance to work with the amazing, talented, and dedicated people across Activision Publishing, Blizzard Entertainment, Beanox, Demonware, Digital Legends, High Moon Studios, Infinity Ward, King, Major League Gaming, Radical Entertainment, Raven Software, Sledgehammer Games, Toys for Bob, Treyarch, and every team across Activision Blizzard. MLG is still a thing? Yes. <laughs> I did not know that. I think they're like exclusively the Call of Duty, like esports federation or whatever the hell. Interesting. Yeah. Until the deal closes, which is projected to happen during Microsoft's fiscal year 2023, so between July 2022 and June 2023, uh, Microsoft and Activision will operate independently if and when it go it does go through. Uh, the Activision Blizzard team will report to Spencer as the CEO of Microsoft Gaming, uh, which was announced today. He is now that's his job title. CEO of Microsoft fucking Gaming. happened. Spencer said that Microsoft will add as many Activision Blizzard games as what we can fucking to happened. Xbox Game Pass for PC and console, including new games we'll and catalog talking. titles. Did you mess up my? Uh, you, you got audio caught off. Yeah, your audio got caught off for like the last right. like 10 seconds. All right. Well, they're going to add Activision Blizzard games to Game Pass. I mean, obviously. Mm. As many as we can, whatever that means. Uh, okay. Spencer went on to say that buying Activision Blizzard will help accelerate our plans for cloud gaming. Uh, Activision games are enjoyed by, on a variety of platforms, and we plan to continue to support those communities moving forward. Wait, they said uh, that they heard you. Really? How is that possible? I don't know. Because it's... Discord says, do you want to switch input devices? And then it gets all messed up. How could you hear them yeah. but not me? I, when, mm -hmm. Whenever that happens, I guess just keep going. And we'll roll with it. Yeah, okay. Uh... Activision Blizzard has made headlines of late regarding its many controversies and lawsuits involving its corporate culture and leadership under CEO Bobby Kotick. Spencer said, Microsoft is committed to our journey for inclusion in every aspect of gaming among both employees and players. 
He added, we deeply value individual studio cultures. We also believe that creative success and autonomy go hand in hand. We're treating every person with dignity and respect. We hold all teams and all leaders to this commitment. We are looking forward to extending our culture of proactive inclusion to the great teams across Activision Blizzard. Suck my cock, Bobby Kotick. You ain't doing <laughs> none of that. Committed to yeah. fuck all you are. In its own statement, Activision Blizzard confirmed that Microsoft will pay $95 per share to acquire Activision uh, for a total payout of $68.7 billion if the deal goes through. In buying Activision Blizzard, Microsoft will also take ownership of massive franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch, as well as Activision's eSports. Activision Blizzard's esports endeavors. Activision's numerous studios and almost 10,000 employees will also become part of Xbox going forward. It would appear Microsoft will have 30 plus internal game development studios following the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. So, so, so I'd imagine for Activision, it's going to be business as usual aside from. Uh, the 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 office environment (laughs) well they they said that until the deal is finalized which could be as late as june next year they're going to remain they're going to operate independently Mm -hmm. so microsoft will still be microsoft and activision will still be activision right um i guess what do i want to say I guess just the idea that there's going to be a new sheriff in town and right. it's a sheriff that isn't a complete disaster, <laughs> I think is very, uh, I think it can be very helpful, like for the frame of mind of people who work at Activision. Although, and we, we'll get to this later, uh, like the union that's trying to, uh, it's not, not like an official union, but you know, the Activision Blizzard, like conglomerate of employees or whatever it's right. called. Like they've said, they've said their concerns about, this whole thing we'll get we'll get to that at i'd like end. to know that i'd like to know uh how other companies that have been bought by microsoft how they've been able to to like how has that worked for them specifically gaming companies i don't care about actual like like tech companies that have been bought by microsoft i only care about the gaming stuff right like like how has things been going on with bethesda i'd imagine that microsoft pretty much just lets them do whatever they want and just just helps them if they if if they feel like they can interject in any way, from what I know, uh, Blizz, uh, not Blizzard, Bethesda, like Bethesda employees have not been like, oh, like they they haven't had too many complaints mm-hmm. working under Microsoft. So like for the most part, it's been like smooth sailing. They've been able to do their job without you know any impedance from up top. Right. So I would but, imagine once this goes through with Activision, it should be similar. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd imagine so too. I, th- I think the biggest change is probably going to be the work culture because that's like the biggest thing that that needed to, yeah. to get fixed over there. Um, and I'd imagine they'd have a little more creative control over the games that they want to make, like the developers at Activision, because. Uh, Oh, uh, right now it seems like they're all just forced to make money. <laughs> they're all just forced to like <laughs> well, to like make Call of Duty and that's it. That's that specifically. Because yeah. you know, Activision Activision Blizzard and let's not forget King, which is the Candy Crush company, which Activision also owns, they make games that make money. Mm-hmm. The problem is Call of Duty makes the most money. And that is on a very rigid cycle that has to come out once a year, every year. So rather but than according to, to talk- Activision's current plan, Correct. it doesn't mean that that needs to be the case. Right. But what I'm trying to say is, as of now, that is the case. Right. You know, you have all these studios who have done many great things, but they're not allowed to continue those great things because they have to be folded into the Call of Duty machine. Or they get moved over to be, you know, a part of, you know, whatever the fuck uh, Blizzard needs. 
So, so, so yeah, there's a new Call of Duty every year and it's bigger and bigger and, and, and it takes more resources and, and it costs more and more money and, 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 and whatnot. But this last Call of Duty, and I'm pretty sure the one before that, uh, sold, it didn't sell well. They, they haven't been, Call of Duty has not been selling well. It's been, sell, well, it's probably been selling well in the grand scheme of things, but as a Call of Duty game, they've been selling worse. And, yeah. uh, uh, this last one did was a, was a it was concerning how how poorly it did. However, Not- Warzone is the big money maker. So like, there's no reason for them to keep on this yearly cycle of big right. budget single player experiences or, or 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 these multiplayers that are barely any different from each other when you have your freaking free to play game that's making you a lot of money just just make that good um yeah and there's no reason to have a bill there's a billion developers working on call of duty and it's still buggy and yeah. system resource it's a hog it's a resource hog like there, there was a there was a period like for a couple of months after vanguard launched where people were complaining about how like the multiplayer is broken and like a lot of things don't work and Activision needs to fix this. Right. Um, and I'm over here like Activision's got to fix a lot of things and I'm sure Call of Duty's not the top priority for them to fix. It took them over a year to get an anti-cheat in uh in Warzone. Yeah. And people were cheating like crazy. Um, yeah. It, uh, conversely, Halo's got problems too, but it runs right. so much better. Right, because they delayed the game by a full year <laughs> to make sure it could do the bare minimum that a game can do, which is run. Right. And you Call know, of Duty were... has been based off of the same engine for so long. Just, just, yeah. just they've been tweaking and tweaking that engine. It's just, and and Halo was just pretty much the ground up. Just here's a freaking here's a here's a good multiplayer. You know. Yeah. Um, I saw somewhere Phil Spencer talked about, uh, hmm, how could I, how would I find this? Phil Spencer had a great, uh, uh, was it Phil Spencer? Somebody said something about, somebody was asked something about Call of Duty. Oh no, it was Bobby Kotick. Uh, so we could talk about that real quick. Uh, actually before we get there, so Bobby Kotick did an interview with, uh, Video game beat, venture beat. I don't remember. Oh, venture beat. Yeah, yeah. He did an interview with venture beat. This ve- this interview is being panned by Twitter because of how soft it is. They're not they're not asking Bobby Kotick any questions about like you know the harassment lawsuit and how <laughs> the, the he like crimes. the sex crimes and how Bobby Kotick threatened in the life of employees and stuff, um, or like how he's covering up like. How, who he's firing or like things like that or that there was any harassment at all or that he made statements under other people's names to make himself oh, look two, better two days ago there was an article about how like he's still not being honest about the cha- the changes that are currently going on at activism activision right. blizzard you know like yes this is a big change but we're talking about like the corporate culture of it, he still he was still being like very dishonest and like hiding things from people. So I'd imagine part of this, part of the uh, agreement to do this interview with Venture Beat was probably like you can't talk about X, Y, and Z, or else we don't want to do yeah. the interview. I'd imagine there were some ground rules. They do yeah. mention the the controversies, I guess you could say, um, but it's like super soft the way the 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 journalist like words it. Uh, you you got a you have you had a few months of tough coverage, a lot of tough words from the Wall Street Journal. What was some of the learning from this experience that you've had? And Kodak says, from my perspective, if you have one single incident of harassment at your company, that's one too many, and you don't want to have an environment where people don't feel safe and comfortable and respected. And so, when the EEOC started their investigation, where where it was like three years ago now, that was the catalyst for us to start thinking about how to do change and transform the culture to making sure that you do have the most safe, welcoming, inclusive culture. It's a priority for me to make sure we have the very best workplaces. 
if I was the journalist, I would have followed up with, how have you done that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Name a specific way that you've done that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the next question was, I wonder it. I this was the follow-up question to that. This is what he followed up with. I wonder, is there anything that you think will benefit Call of Duty from this? I'm sure it's the number one thing Call of Duty fans and people like me who are Warzone players are worried about. And Kodak says, I would say probably the biggest thing is the AI and machine learning and ultimate access to that talent. And that that's one of our big needs. For the long term, we could have a real streaming Call of Duty experience that's going to be critically important. For you podcast listeners out there, I'm making the jerk off motion with my hand. <laughs> so a lot of this, into well, first of all, Call of Duty, there's currently no way to stream that game. So uh, I think yeah. being part of Game Pass and having like a like being able to stream Call of Duty that way would be like huge. To be able to yeah. play Warzone on a streaming device would be freaking incredible. Um, and I'd imagine like Activision has been holding off on doing something like that because they wanted to do their own service, but now they're being acquired by Microsoft. They could do whatever. Most of this interview is Bobby Kotick saying, we want to compete against trillion dollar companies and we can't compete against trillion dollar companies uh, until we join a trillion dollar company, basically. Right. Which is, that's, I listen, I'm not going to pretend like I know anything about running multi-million dollar organizations, hundreds right. of millions of dollars worth of an organization. But that sounds like horseshit. It sounds like <laughs> this guy went seventy billion dollars. Sure, I'm gonna Give get fired to tomorrow yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's it sounds like he's trying to make it look like we want to do bigger and better things, and the only way to do that is to partner with Microsoft. No, yeah. it sounds like you're just giving up, giving it to them, and cashing out. That's what this sounds yeah. like. One hundred percent. So, so all of the all of the articles we've seen say that uh, Bobby Kotick, the piece of shit CEO of Activision, uh, is th they're set they're they're kind of wording it like he's going to lead Activision still, but all of the like all of the like like context clues are saying that they're just that's just they're just saying that that, that eventually that he will formality. Yes, it's a formality. Yeah. Eventually, he will be forced out. Well, it, he's going to be forced out in well over a year. June mm -hmm. 2023 is when, you know, that's when he's going to officially leave if he doesn't leave before then. Right. And if if Microsoft and Activision are still going to be independent until that date, then that means he still wields some form of power over all of Activision. So it's still very possible that from now until June next year, the workplace culture at Activision doesn't get better. The, 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 it this just is all remains the same until he leaves. <clears throat> this is all. There's no. There's nothing set in stone about this. This is all just kind of what we're what what we're speculating. Uh, right. Eurogamer has an article here that says uh, the deal is expected to go June 2023, like Will just said. Um, yeah. And then who is uh, this is Phil Spencer, I think, say no. Who is this? Microsoft spokesperson said Bobby Kotick will continue to serve as CEO of Activision Blizzard, and he and his team will maintain their focus on driving efforts to further strengthen the company's culture and accelerate business growth. Sounds like bullshit to me. Uh, once the deal closes, the Activision Blizzard business will report to Phil Spencer, CEO of Microsoft Gaming. So that's it's kind of really vague because yeah i guess they just don't want to scare investors right now uh microsoft stock was it microsoft stock or activision stock one of them just freaking soared today and both this of news. Them did. um side and just, note uh sony's stock fell seven percent <laughs> damn <laughs> and then here's a tweet that says apropos of nothing uh, here's how much Activision Blizzard is to pay Kodak if he is terminated as a result of a change in control of the company per his employee ag agreement. This is another reason why we don't think he's being forced out uh, just yet yeah. or, or, or they're going to find a way to force him out. Because if he is terminated as per a change of, of leadership, 
he would make just under three hundred million dollars for his for his departure. Yeah. Just just for being forced out, he would make three hundred million dollars. Uh, if he was terminated uh, by Activision Blizzard without cause or termination by employee for good reason. Or termination by employee for good reason. So if he had a good reason to be terminated, he might make $265 million. <laughs> but if he was terminated by Activision Blizzard for cause, I don't know what the difference is between for cause or yeah. for good reason, but if it's for cause, he would only take a measly 264000 Yeah. So hopefully they terminate him for cause. Hopefully... Uh, the the California State Department or whoever the hell is is suing them. Hopefully, they find that cause, and he only gets a measly two hundred and sixty four thousand. What a slap in the face! Well, I know, like the reason why people are calling him calling on him to resign rather than be fired is because resigning, yes, he will get a bigger severance package, but it's easier. For him to just walk away than it is to fire somebody at that level. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. If he dies, <laughs> he gets $250 million. <laughs> his corpse, his dead body, gets $250 million. How do I get this yep. deal? Um, well, be an asshole. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, well, I, I gotta well, start being an asshole. Yeah. So, so I wanted to say this deal is seventy billion dollars. Microsoft yes. bought Activision for seventy billion dollars. The last I checked, which was around like twenty seventeen or eighteen, the entire video games industry globally was worth a hundred billion dollars. So this is worth. 70% of the entire video well, games industry for just I, that one year? I don't know if that's the case. I saw something like So so wait, let me let me finish. I, okay. Now the video game I'm seeing conflicting reports. One report says that the video games industry is worth a little over 200 billion for this year. No, no, no 170 billion for this year. Uh, and last year, I saw a report that said it was under a hundred billion. So somewhere between a hundred and two hundred billion is what the global video games market is worth in a year. And Microsoft is buying Activision for seventy billion. That's how big of a deal this is. I saw somewhere uh, Nintendo, like they yes. were recently valued at like what sixty, 60. billion. Yeah. Nintendo, one of the big three is yes. worth less than this deal was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we didn't report it on this show, but like a few weeks ago, uh Take Two bought Zynga for 13 billion. And at the time that was considered the largest video game acquisition <laughs> in history. So this is the largest video games acquisition in history, correct? Can we yes. say that? Yes. Yeah, no, definitively. That's it's it's I don't know. I can't imagine this being beaten by anybody other than Microsoft. <laughs> no, no. I'm also yeah. very surprised that Microsoft is willing to put this much money into Xbox. Um uh, if you were to say to me a few years ago that they were doing this, I would agree. But I think now they've reached a point where they've re they've rehabilitated the brand. They have a service that people seem to love i think 25 million people are game pass subscribers across all platforms mm. um apparently there are, there's been reports that the xbox series line of systems is in parity with how many ps5s are selling so they're they're roughly selling about the same ps5s and xbox series systems whereas last generation it was a two-to-one lead from sony PS4 is outsold, Xbox One's two to one. So Xbox is in a much better position now than it was a few years ago. So I think, you know, all the people at Microsoft have seen the value of Xbox as a brand, Xbox as a video game system, Xbox as a lifestyle, if you want. So they're willing to put more money into it and grow it 
to be the name in gaming and then possibly even beyond gaming they have a unique uh situation where they have pc gaming like like yeah like they might not be leaders in consoles but uh they if you include the pc share it's insane it, it, mm-hmm. i i uh, pie chart of console <laughs> versus pc gaming like the, i've i've seen these charts where it shows like you know like nintendo nintendo switch uh ps5 xbox whatever the fuck yeah. um and pc is the largest chunk of the pie uh and then you include xbox in that and it's freaking insane yeah so these charts suck. uh Take I put the uh, I put the tweets from um, Activision Blizzard King uh, Workers Alliance (ABK). That's what they're called. That's easy ah, enough to remember. I put the tweet okay, thread from them. I see that. In the key. Yeah, if you want to read what they said? The news of Activision's acquisition by Microsoft is surprising, but it does not change the goals of the ABK uh, Workers Alliance. We remain committed to fighting for workplace improvements and the rights of our employees, regardless of who is financially in control of the company. We will continue to work alongside our allies in the games industry to push for measurable changes in an industry that desperately needs it. We called for the removal of Bobby Kotick as CEO in in November for shielding abusers, and he still remains CEO as of this writing. The strike at Raven QA is in its fifth week, and our striking staff has still not received response from leadership regarding our request to negotiate. Finally, three out of our four original collective demands to improve the conditions for women in our works workforce have not been met. Whatever the leadership uh, structure of the company, we will continue to push to end abuse in gaming and appreciate the outpouring of support we've experienced this last year. Damn. Yeah. The employees of Activision Blizzard King working together for change. These tweets are our opinions and do not reflect theirs. Interesting. Yeah. So according to the, according to them, uh, they're still things have not gotten significantly better. Right. Kodak is still in charge. Uh, the Raven strike is still ongoing with no word uh, for negotiation. They're requests to improve working conditions for women in the company have not been met um hopefully uh microsoft changes this but if Kodak is still in charge until 2023 it doesn't look like these changes are happening anytime soon and these are things that should have happened months ago i wonder when this whole acquisition was in talks because uh yeah uh, because uh, these things usually take a while, but I feel like this one might have been after the whole Bobby Kodak shit. I feel like that's what I—that's what I, I'm wondering too. Because c- Phil Spencer made a statement ag- pretty much against Activision and said we're going to do what we can, and then and then he yeah. fucking and bought them. <laughs> And we were all, we were all like when he made that statement, it was kind of like a softball statement. We were all like, "That's bullshit. They should just stop working with Activision completely." Well, yeah. I never expected him to to go that hard because that's pretty. Yeah. That's we, we were all like, Microsoft, you better never work with them again, or or get off the feet, like like get out of here. Like like your statement means nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. they went above and beyond, and they were like, "These guys are a yeah. problem." We'll take care of it, and they just fucking yeah. bought them. <laughs> we'll we'll put, we'll fix their wagon. Holy hell! Jesus, uh, yeah, and and I mean, I think it's even if they just keep making the same amount of money, they this is the way it works with Microsoft. Even if they just keep making the same amount of money they've been making, a Microsoft will do just fine. It's not like they're gonna yeah. lose out on a deal like this. Um, but uh. There's a lot they can do with all the IPs they're getting, all of these like incredibly talented developers that are being completely underutilized right now. Yeah. Um and then it really pisses me off that you have Bobby Kodak over here talking about how uh in order to get better they need uh they they need the talents at Microsoft like 
like the AI capabilities and the streaming capabilities and all that. It's like, no, you just needed to do things differently. And the only way to do that is to not have you in charge and to have them in charge because they know what they're doing. You're not going to be around to stop acting like this is like the only play for you. Yeah. There were a lot of things you could have done that to prevent this. Right. So, uh, Tetris shots is how much did Microsoft buy Bethesda for? Was that eight billion? Eight billion. Yeah, I saw a tweet that was like uh, breaking down like all of the acquisitions they recently did, and uh, this one oh, yeah. is by far the most. It's like by oh, yeah. a lot, by not oh, even. Yeah. I think my, I think Bethesda was like the next biggest. Um. But there is a lot that Microsoft does have to offer to 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 things like Activision, and having all of these IPs is insane. Like, yeah. uh, now Microsoft has Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Microsoft has Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, two brands yeah. synonymous with PlayStation. Yeah, they also I'll, I'll throw Tony Hawk in there too. Tony Hawk. They now have Overwatch, um, Overwatch. Call of Duty. So Call of Duty is an interesting case because uh, people, a lot of people are really worried that that's not going to be on PlayStation anymore. Yeah. Microsoft is really weird. I don't know how it's going to work. It, it's, it, it is possible that all of this, all of these games have the possibility of being Microsoft exclusives. All of them will yes. be on PC. They're not going to, you don't have to worry. If you play these games on PC, you're not going to have to worry. Um, but I, I've, feel like Call of Duty of all the games has the best chance of remaining uh, multi-platform because mm-hmm. it, as we've seen with like Minecraft, that game is too big to not be on every platform imaginable. And Call of Duty is like at the same level. I think with regards to Bethesda, you know, as of right now, only Starfield you know, is uh, confirmed to be exclusive to Xbox. But I feel like that's because Starfield is a brand new IP. It's a brand new video game and they can afford to make that exclusive. Something like Elder Scrolls or Fallout or, you know, Wolfenstein and Doom even. Those I feel like whenever new installments of that come out, uh, those will be multi-platform because they've always been multi-platform. There's too much to lose for them to not be multi-platform. Yeah, I'm not sure what Microsoft's goal is here. I, I, I We said for a really long time on this podcast, since this, this generation was being speculated about, we've been talking yeah. about how Microsoft doesn't really care where you play the games as long as they play the games. And right now mm-hmm. they're acquiring every game company ever. <laughs> so it seems like they're just trying to cast a really wide net. And... If, you know, if they own Call of Duty and somebody buys Call of Duty for PlayStation, they still win. So uh, I don't think that's a big deal. And right now, if you look, this is a weird thing about Call of Duty. If you look at all of the streamers that play Call of Duty and stuff, they all play Call of Duty on PC. And the ones that use controllers use PlayStation controllers. I don't know why. It's very weird. But that's how it is. None of these people play it on PlayStation. <laughs> but I know a lot of people do play it on PlayStation. A lot of people yeah. who play it on console prefer PlayStation for some reason because I think PlayStation well, I is just know, the most popular. I think well, I know during the 360 era, like Microsoft had a deal with Activision to have Xbox be more or less synonymous with Call of Duty. So like mm-hmm. all the DLC went to Xbox first, all the the marketing material promoted Xbox over the other systems. Uh and then when the PS4 came out, it switched. So Sony became the primary platform, got all the DLC first and whatnot. Now it looks like it's going back to Xbox. So that happened with Destiny also. Yeah. Um, But that switched back to Microsoft. Destiny, I think with Destiny 2, they switched all the marketing back to Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, Jordan64 in the chat found this Wikipedia list of highest, most expensive video game acquisitions. Oh, wow. uh, the number one, of course, is Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard for 
for $68.7 billion. The next, the number two highest acquisition, Take-Two Interactive buying Zanga for $12.7 billion. So that's the gap. Yeah. And then number four is Microsoft buying ZeniMax, which is Bethesda, for yeah. $8.1 billion. So... Microsoft out here, uh, and then you go a little further, and Microsoft buying Mojang for two point five billion. Yeah, Microsoft's out here, uh, you know, doing work. They're, cl- they're cleaning contact. house. Uh, Disney bought Fox for seventy one point three billion. So this is in that ballpark here. Mm. This isn't like. You know, when Disney bought Marvel for like $4 billion, or even when they bought Lucasfilm and Star Wars for $4 billion. Microsoft buying Bethesda was Disney buying Lucasfilm. This is That's Disney insane. buying Fox. Yeah. That, I didn't know Fox was worth more. Yeah. I mean, Marvel is was worth more in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel was probably the best investment Disney has ever made. Yeah. So, I mean, Disney bought Fox more or less to fill out their catalog of online stuff. Mm-hmm. Like to give the Disney Plus like a whole lot of online content. But the thing about Disney buying Fox was it wasn't just the movies they were buying. There were other things. There was a majority stake in Hulu. So Fox also so Disney now owns two streaming services, two of the primary streaming services in this country. They own so many more movie studios now. They own of whatever else Fox had their hand in, not like the TV channels and the sports and stuff, but like Lord knows what else Fox had a hand in is now under control of Disney. And you know, we probably won't get into it now, but the idea of Microsoft buying Activision, yes, it's good and it's cool in the in one respect because we're getting rid of a shitty person and we're you know trying to make gaming a better place but at the same time this does raise questions of is this turning microsoft into a gaming monopoly is this gonna you know result in weird antitrust things going on going forward um I don't know. I don't know if that uh, if if my, that's what Microsoft is trying to do. I don't know if it's something they can do. But it what do does. You mean? Well, just I don't know. Like, if I don't know if it's something they can do in the sense of yes, Microsoft has a lot of money, but do they have enough money to theoretically continue to buy major video game publishers? Like I can't. This? I can't imagine them doing any more. Yeah. I mean, they have a fuck ton of money. Yeah. All of these big companies just hoard money in the bank. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're just not doing anything with it, which is horrible for our economy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what antitrust issues we're going to have. Like, it, this, I think that this acquisition, this $70 billion acquisition, is is a horrible example of our of capitalism at work. However, as a gamer, I think this is great news. <laughs> <laughs> like this is bad for our for our country that something like this is allowed to happen. However, yeah. Activision needed to Activision is also a terrible example of capitalism and needed to be fixed. And unfortunately, yeah. We just need uh, uh, like an anti-hero like Xbox to come in <laughs> and 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 uh, and use the power of capitalism to their to to yeah to our advantage, I guess. Um, we just you basically just need just need an evil corporation with good intentions to to fix things. Yeah, um, and that's um, what the hope like, is here. Yeah, like they say, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. You just have to learn how to pick your battles. <laughs> Yeah, that basically, yeah, exactly. And this is, we're just hoping this is one of the good battles. Um, so, uh, I think in the long run, this is going to be great for, for, for us as consumers. Um, 
uh, other, uh, otherwise, you know, as far as capitalism goes, this is just the way it is. It's not not yeah. great, but this is just the world we live in. Um, yeah. But anyway, I also wanted to talk about this in the uh, in the interview that they had. Um, Bobby Kotick brought up an interesting thing about uh, 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 like hardware manufacturing and and some interesting stuff about the hardware they've made in, in the recent past. You look at the opportunities that we get with company like with a company like Microsoft. I'll give you one great example. Phil and I started riffing on things in the future. I'll give you three that are really compelling. I wanted to make a new Guitar Hero for a while. Like Bobby Kotick's going to develop a Guitar Hero game. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I don't want to add teams to do manufacturing and supply chain and QA for manufacturing. And the chip shortages are enormous. Uh, I'll also note that Guitar Hero failed because they completely flooded the market with guitar they hero oversaturated the market and when that folded guess where all those teams had to go to, to the guitar mini games in call of duty <laughs> yes it's not guitar hero's fault that it failed it's not the supply chain's fault that it failed it's the leadership that activision's fault that guitar hero failed yeah we didn't really have the ability to do that. I had a really cool vision for what the next guitar hero would be and realized we okay, and realized we don't have the resources to do that and Skylanders too. One of the great disappointments of my career is when I abused all of those women. I mean, one of my greatest disappointments <laughs> in my career is is that other people came in and they came out with crappy alternatives and they dumped all of these crappy alternatives in the market and basically destroyed the market for what was a really cool future opportunity. He means toys to life. If you yeah. look at Skylanders with its hardware and manufacturing and supply chain, there are the same kinds of things that we can't do, but Microsoft can. And in these okay. conversations, I was sharing my frustration. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, people loved Disney Infinity. Like that, yeah. people loved Disney Infinity more than they did Skylanders. And Lego Dimensions lasted for much longer than the other two. And, you know, it had a small cult following, but people really enjoyed it because it had a much wider breadth of characters and concepts that could be integrated into the game. And Amiibo is still going strong because Nintendo figured out how to do it without being shitty about it. The, 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 the problem isn't that those things are are garbage the problem is that they had too many of them and and skylanders yeah. is not an exception they also had way too many of them they released way too many of them like toys to life was a great idea uh but they did the same thing that they did with guitar hero they 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 released it it hit really good and they just squeezed it for all that it was worth until it was dead yeah every activision franchise even like dating back to the ps2 era like Tony Hawk was a was an annual franchise that they ran into the ground. Guitar Hero was an annual franchise they ran into the ground. Skylanders, uh, they canceled a lot of projects because they couldn't find ways to make it annual franchises. Most famously, when they merged with Blizzard, they canceled Ghostbusters and Brutal Legend, and uh, there was another big one I'm forgetting. But they canceled all those because they said we can't make these yearly franchises. Right. I think Meanwhile, Mike, Ghostbusters is like people still love that game. I think Microsoft is really good at uh, not beating a dead horse. Mm -hmm. I think they're really good at at making it finding their the 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 IPs that people love and just trying their best to make it good and yeah and unique and taking their time on it. And I think Halo is a great example. They were like, yeah. "Fuck it, we'll wait a year." Screw it. It doesn't matter if this is our <laughs> our our big system seller. We'll just sell yeah. the systems next year, I guess. And uh, it kind of worked. Yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised if this spells the end of yearly Call of Duty releases. I hope so. Yeah, and I just I will I want to be there when you know Phil goes into Infinity Ward and Raven and Sledgehammer and uh treyarch and all the other studios and he says how about this year you just make what you want <laughs> yeah or you take a break and we'll, we'll, we'll give you break. another year i think developers make, are gonna yeah. are gonna are gonna like grab his leg oh my god thank you so much we <laughs> needed you so badly <laughs> 
I, mean, I, I think Bobby there's, Co- there's, gonna be, there's gonna be a Call of Duty, but like ten studios don't have to work on it to make sure it gets done yeah. in eight months. You know, I, I, it, I, Infinity War can take you know five years to make it themselves, and Raven can do whatever the hell they want. You know, Sledgehammer can do something different. Treyarch can fucking make movie license games again like they used to. I think uh, uh, Phil Spencer's going to walk into these studios and be like, oh my God, what have they done to you people? <laughs> uh, but it's going to take a really long time for that to happen. There's so many freaking Activision yeah. studios. So it's funny you say that because my wife and I just started watching Succession on HBO. And mm-hmm. there is a scene where the the eldest son, Kendall, walks into uh, a company that uh, his father's parent company just bought. And he's talking about how he's going to like reinvent them to make sure they stay in business. And then the next day he comes back and he says, okay, uh, people who cover food and drugs, you go upstairs because you guys make money. Everyone else, you're fired. Whoa. So I'm just like, Talking about like Phil going in, like Phil going in to talk to these people, like that's playing in my head. I'm not saying that will happen, but I've seen it happen on HBO, and it's pretty, it's pretty terrible. You know what I'm I, saying is, what I'm saying is, you guys should start watching Succession. It's a very good show. I, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about that, and that's it's been around a while, hasn't it? it it's it, it just wrapped up its third season. Yeah, why all of a sudden are people talking about it? Because apparently the third season was the best season. And I'm not there yet. (laughs) So, I also just watched a TikTok from Adam Ruins Everything, that guy. And he talks about how uh, the show got canceled because it was uh, picked up by, uh, like, True TV was picked up by AT&T or something. And uh, just as the nature of acquisitions go... A bunch of people got laid off. Yeah. Um, so as good as I think this will be for Activision, just sometimes when companies get acquired, they shed some people because there's no, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of overlap. I think Microsoft is really good at, 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 at you know, the human element. Um, yeah, because so far with all the companies they've acquired, I think like any layoffs have been like at the top. Mm-hmm. You know, people who can afford to like not yeah, work and they, for and a they while. get a parachute. So who gives a shit about them yeah. anyway? So, and like everyone who was working there previously, like I think everybody who worked at Bethesda before the merger still works there, aside from like a handful of top exec. Yeah, we always if there's major layoffs at a studio, there's always articles about it, and I haven't really heard any articles talk about how there's been layoffs from Microsoft. You always hear articles about layoffs at Activision after they post record profits. <laughs> right. That's true. Always. Yeah. Bobby Kotick takes like another hundred million dollars in his pocket. And then uh, right after he just laid off a thousand people, they do shareholder meetings where they say, they say on the call, this has been the best year for Activision blizzard as a whole. We have made so much money. However, 500 of you have no job anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's very clear that uh, the 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 shareholders and and uh, Bobby Kotick are are here just to make money. They don't give a shit yeah. about the future of the company or anything. They I don't just even think Bobby Kotick gives a shit about games in general. Right. Like I don't think he plays games. I don't think he likes video games. I just think it's something he sees it as an easy money maker for him. Yeah, he's just trying to turn a profit, and 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 right yeah. now him selling. Uh, them being acquired by Microsoft is just the best way for Bobby Kotick to make the most money out of his horrible situation. Yeah. Also, I said before when I was reading all the great ideas Bobby Kotick had for 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 Activision, the third one was something about Candy Crush. He said there should be a social element. We should have a, a voiceover IP and all of this stuff that Microsoft can do. Uh, so good for him. I don't know who gives a shit about yeah. Candy Crush. <laughs> Um, I also looked up, uh, how many studios, uh, Activision has, uh, I saw somewhere it said nine. I was like, that's way too little. Uh, I'm not going to count, but here it is. Here's like every <laughs> freaking studio. And there are a lot there. What do you think? Like 20? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's a lot. It's a lot of studios. Yeah. It's more than nine. Uh, 
That's a lot of games. That's a lot of games we yeah. could potentially have. And keep in mind, like, of all the studios they, you know, bought and, like, are defunct now, they own the, the IP for a lot of those. Sierra, they own the entire Sierra games library. So there's a lot of classic adventure games and, like, games that have not seen print in years, like No One Lives Forever, that could possibly come back thanks to Microsoft or at the very least be put in Game Pass for people to play. Royalty 13 has a good point. I was just showing Activision. <laughs> there's also <laughs> Blizzard and King, and King is the mobile developer. Yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, I read that uh, Microsoft barely has any mobile uh, stake besides their streaming. Yeah. They don't really have mobile developers. So um, mm -hmm. that's, I think King is like a, is a, is a, a lot of, it's like a really big deal for Microsoft. Um, but yeah, Blizzard has a bunch and, and King King is a big deal too. So there's potentially yeah. like around 30 studios that they just acquired. And Microsoft already had a shit ton of studios before that. Um, a lot of people are talking about how uh, Microsoft has so many IPs now after this acquisition that they can make their own uh, like team up game, like like a Smash Brothers or yeah. All Stars Brawl or something like that. Um, I, I saw uh, obviously a fighting game would be really weird to have like yeah. Crash Bandicoot and Master Chief and and freaking uh, 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 the Gears of War guys in it. But I saw somebody yeah. suggest having an arena shooter, which would kind of be really cool. Yeah, but it would also be weird to see like Crash Bandicoot with a gun, <laughs> Tony Hawk with a gun. Uh, you make it like Fortnite style. Who cares? I guess. True. Spider Man with a gun. <laughs> Batman with a gun. Yeah, they're all already in Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this is going to end. I don't know how much more Microsoft could possibly acquire before they start making a profit. They got to start profiting off of these acquisitions they've been having. I know. Uh, anyway, uh, I think this is, uh, good for us as gamers. I think this, uh, we're gonna, and, 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 and me as a Microsoft fan, I've been, I've been, you know, <laughs> playing mostly on Microsoft this generation and, uh, yeah. I've been having a good time. This week's video was going to be about the PC I just got, but I fucking killed it today. It's dead now. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Uh, this you can make a video about this oh yeah you're Batman far from year two good. batman that's exactly figure. what i want to do thanks thanks so much uh squid vorp says reinstall windows i know <laughs> i'm gonna have to do that it sucks anyway we got to read notifications but i want to keep on the topic of activision real quick very quick banjo is coming to nintendo switch january 20th yes and by Activision, you mean Microsoft. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Rare. You know, all, you know, but like, whatever. This is what I mean. Like, Microsoft has shown that they're willing to play ball with other platforms. Right. And especially Nintendo. So I don't, I think the possibility of Activision games, Blizzard games uh, being released on Switch or PlayStation is still there. N newer games are up in the air. But, you know, I think Call of Duty will appear on multi-platforms. I think uh, Blizzard's games will appear on multi-platforms as well. Um, it would be weird if Crash Bandicoot, the next Crash Bandicoot game, was an Xbox exclusive. <laughs> yes. That would be I don't weird. know if I'm ready for that world. <laughs> well, it happened. They had a, an Xbox exclusive Crash Bandicoot, didn't they? Did they? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I'm thinking Banjo-Kazooie. Nuts and bolts. Yeah. Um, what was the last Crash game, though? Be before the revival? The revival? Because there was... They did the Insane Trilogy, and then they did Crash 4, It's About Time. And that was right. all multi-platform. That was multi-platform with the lead system being Sony. Mind over Mutant. Yeah. Yeah, that was on all platforms at the time. Uh, and then they did the Insane Trilogy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, It's About Time was the one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Crash of the Titans. I thought that was an Xbox. I thought that was on Xbox for... 
No? Okay, it was on everything. All right. Never mind. Wait. What? <laughs> I think this is why I'm confused. It was an Xbox 360 title, but a PlayStation. Crash of the Titans? Yeah, and it was on PlayStation yeah, okay. 2. That was probably a cross gen game. Like, that probably came out when the 360 came out, like right when the 360 came out, but 2007. more people had PS2s. What, t- what year? 2007. Oh, so the PS3 was out by then. And same thing with uh, the same thing with Mind Over Mutant. It was on PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360. That's weird. And, and Wii. That's why I thought that they were Xbox exclusives. Yeah. Uh, that, that was, you know, those were Activision games. That's right. why Crash was weird. And, and that's another thing about that. Like people around that time, people were like, man, we need a new Crash game. And it's like, you just fucking got one. You just didn't buy it. And then there was well, a I giant gap. Because I'm pretty sure, what are you talking about like back then? Yeah. You're not talking about Crash 4. No. I'm talking about okay. after like my after Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant, there was a giant gap. And around right. like 2013, 2014, people were like, when are we gonna get a new Crash game? It's been so long. And it's like, yo, you just got two and you didn't even you didn't buy them because you didn't even know about them. <laughs> also, I was gonna say I don't think they were. Because people did buy the insane trilogy and Crash Team Raging Nitro Fueled. And right. Crash 4, people bought those and liked those. People bought the Spyro Trilogy and liked the Spyro Trilogy. People bought Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 and loved it. It was award-winning. It sold better than any other Tony Hawk game since Underground. And Activision decided to close the studios or move them over to Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, they don't... Activision doesn't leave room for smaller games. They're just like, you got to yeah. make us a butt ton of money or get out of our face. Twice, when they had the James Bond license, twice uh, f- with Bloodstone and Legends, when those games didn't perform to their standards, they just shut the studios down. <laughs> and one of them, Eurocom, wasn't even an Activision studio. Oh my God. Uh, All right. We got to read notifications. It's been a long time. Yes. Uh, Kelv30, thank you for the subscription. Gamer Lady, thanks for the 10 months. Love you guys. Thanks for giving me something to listen to. No problem. Kikoba, thank you for the 26 months. Will 2022 be the year of the Bob slash Meehan, ToeJam, and Earl stream? What? <laughs> I'm supposed to stream ToeJam and Earl with Jerry? That sounds horrible. That does sound horrible. Also, I... Air Fryer. <laughs> Oh, I missed that part. Toe Jam and Earl seems like a bad game. <laughs> I We it's played just... it a really long time. Like, you know, we played it. We, like, rented it from Blockbuster. Yeah. And I barely remember the experience. That's a weird game. I don't think we understood it. Right. Because it was, like, a procedurally generated adventure game where you had to try to find the pieces to your ship. Right. And it was just super bizarre. And then That's... the next game, Panic on Funkatron, was a platformer. <laughs> I feel like I would not like uh, that first one. I feel like I would not like just walking around trying to find pieces of my ship. Yeah. I think that the most recent one, Back in the Groove, like it's that same style, but I've, I've heard it's like modernized a lot. So maybe you can just try Back in the Groove. I mean, I have it. It's on my Switch. There I just go. never played it. The um, Bob and Me Hand stream is on. No, it's not. Uh, Aber with 500 bits. Do you think Microsoft will make the studios Xbox exclusive? Yeah, we talked about that. Um, yeah, it's really up in the air. I I think that they're pretty good at not doing that, but it's a it's entirely possible. I mean, some of them, some of these games are gonna be Microsoft exclusives. Yeah, but uh, I think that. I think that we're pretty safe with some of them. Like, I don't know if Call of Duty is going to be a problem. Well, even with the act with the Blizz, no, the 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 other one, Bethesda. With the Bethesda acquisition, there are some games from them that are up in the air. Like, we don't know if 
their Indiana Jones game is going to be multi-platform or not. Right. They haven't said. Uh, Dark type with 100 bits. I can't believe my StarCraft COD Candy Crush crossover is finally coming true. <laughs> it could have come true before. Sh- yeah. Shane Ep91, Shane thank you for the subscription. Jay Cannon with the 10 months. Hey, Bob, that Breville got to... Hey, hey, got that Breville. Got to work on my Steam Milk game. Also, Banjo-Kazooie. One out of 20 on Nintendo Switch Online. What? Coming January 20th on Nintendo oh. Switch Online. I'm fucking dumb. Uh, congratulations on your new Breville. Here's a little steaming milk tip. This is very hard to explain. I was also very... I mean, I still can't do latte art, but I got the milk. I got the good micro foam going. Here's the tip. You want like a whirlpool when you're steaming the milk, but you don't want it to be cir- you don't want it to circle motion horizontally. You want it vertically. You want it tumbling over itself. You want to kind of like doing both. But uh and you you want to you want to get that little steam tip just under the top and off to the side so you get that nice tumbling, rolling, bubbling. Anyway, um Ethel, thanks for the 29 months. Hope you boys are doing well in this new year. Uh, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Mega Dragon, thanks for the 100 bits. My boys, Crash and Spyro, are going to be Xbox mascots. That feels so weird, considering they used to be PlayStation mascots. Well, PlayStation should have done a little more with their IPs. PlayStation should have just bought those IPs. True. Well, now they they have other mascots. They got Nathan Drake and Ellie and... Uh, Aloy, you know, just people. They have people as their mask. <laughs> Lama Queso? Lame Queso. Thank you for the subscription. Uh, Migs Luna, thanks for the 18 months. Microsoft will b- probably buy EA next. I'm starting to think they have a chance of buying Nintendo. They fucking... Mm, they, That's it, what I mean by, like, Microsoft potentially being a gaming monopoly. I can't imagine them spending another seventy billion. Yeah, but uh, it's possible. And also, I don't know how things work in Japan. They're, they'd be buying a Japanese company. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know how that works. I don't know if they would want to well, do that. They're a freaking well, hundred and thirty year old company. They they did try to buy Nintendo once before. <laughs> All right, didn't they laugh at him or something? Yeah, they left him out of the out of the room. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if Nintendo wants to be bought. Like, I, I, I think that they're no. comfortable being their own thing and you know making their yeah, own no. money. They're not in any. They're not in any dire situation where they would need to be bought. Right. Yeah. I mean, my uh, Activision was in that situation because their CEO was in such hot water and needed yeah. to needs to leave, and this is the yeah. way for him to leave and make the most money out of it. Um. Anyway, Luke Antone with 27 months. You guys watch any good anime lately? No. Uh, I've been watched. I watched The Matrix Resurrections. That's basically an anime. <laughs> Did you like that? You, you liked it, right? I liked it. Yeah. I think other people just don't like being told that they're watching a movie that the director did not want to make, but <laughs> was going to make it anyway. <laughs> I uh I finished uh Star Wars Visions. That was pretty good. I gotta watch that still. Of course they're not all great, but uh no. they're, they're, there's a lot of good ones and and, and it ended really yeah. the, the the last one was I was like, that's the last one? You're gonna end it like that? It was fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um Mega Dragon, thank you for the hundred bits. Do you bros think the government will come in and shut down Xbox acquisition in due of fear of being a monopoly? I think that they could. I hope that they don't, because I hope that they see that. Uh, I hope that they see that the problems that Activision has been going through already, and see yeah. that Microsoft is kind of a best case scenario for that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Winter Chimp, thank you for the six months. Will have you watched any other HBO shows? Also, Bob, have you watched? Illuminati's video on Activision? No, I have not. Uh, I am also watching. It's an HBO Max show, but I am watching Peacemaker. That show is great. I got a lot of 
stuff I need to catch up on. I I I watched yeah. only the first episode of the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. And I really I thought it was okay. And I'm hearing that it's not that the whole thing's not that great. Yeah, it's it's an okay it's really is just an okay show. Like there are parts of it that are pretty good, but then there are other parts where it's like do we need this? Mhm. So I don't know. I don't want to go too much into it if you haven't seen it, but I mean, I'm okay. going to watch it. Yeah. Um, and then now I saw the Moon Knight trailer. That looks crazy. Oh, yeah. I have to watch Hawkeye. I got a lot going on in my life. Yeah. Uh, Winter Chip, thanks for six months. Will, have you watched... Uh, I read that already. Lubick, thank you for the 10 months. Ah, uh, fuck. Ah, uh, piss. Sorry, I'm late. I have my Bezos bugs. Thank you for the Prime. Thank you. I could drag it again with the nine months. Also, I saw ads on the stream. Time to resub with my Amazon Prime. You're goddamn right. You don't get any ads if you're a subscriber here. And if you have Amazon Prime, you don't have to pay us any money. All right. We need to plow through the rest of this because we are late. Okay. Uh, Sony's ramping up production. On, on PlayStation PS4s. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Did you, did you think you were going to get a PlayStation 5 <laughs> anytime soon? no don't be so ridiculous child uh severe game console and graphic card shortages sometimes make developers rethink their plans um in a bid to fight its playstation console shortage sony intends to keep producing ps4s throughout 2022 that essentially means that sony will extend the life of the ps4 for a period of time which means a slower transition to the latest playstation 5 Sony originally planned to stop producing PS4s by the end of 2021. Um, however, Sony decided to keep manufacturing its previous generation console throughout 2022 because it is easier and cheaper to make after having already spent years in production. Sony has never disclosed its plans for its, for its PS4 after the PS5 launch, but traditionally the company keeps selling its previous gen consoles for years after it launches with newer systems. Uh, the PS with the PS5, uh, the company reportedly intend to quickly transition its console business to the PS5. So, so unfortunately, it's clear. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, please. I was just going to say, unfortunately, uh, it is unclear from Bloomberg's reporting whether Sony plans to keep producing PS4 Slims, PS4, or both systems. But Sony has officially confirmed that the PS4 is still in production. It is one of the best-selling consoles ever, and there is always crossover between generations. So, uh, I mean, interesting. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. I think that's kind of fucking crazy well, that they're that 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 they're just get kind of given up. <laughs> so traditionally, every PlayStation system has had at, at minimum a ten-year life cycle. Mm -hmm. So Sony Sony has produced all their systems for 10 years, like from beginning to end, like the PlayStation one, the PlayStation one was still in production up until the PS three came out. And the, the PlayStation two was in production up until the PS four came out. So it doesn't surprise me that the PS four is still in production. What surprises me is the reasoning behind it, <laughs> that they're going to ramp up production on the ps4 because they can't get enough ps5s out there i mean th that they must have seen the numbers and been like hey we're still selling these guys because nobody can buy a playstation 5 yeah. so i mean might as well make some more money while we're at it yeah i guess but i mean i feel like at this point how much more money can you make on a ps4 when everybody knows the ps5 is out but they can't get them that's the problem yeah uh, yeah, but if had maybe if uh, I don't know, instead of pouring resources into making more PS4s, they pour resources into making more PS5s. <laughs> they determined that it's cheaper and easier to just make more PlayStation 4s. I I don't think that's going to work for them in the <laughs> long run though. Probably well, I mean, I don't know, maybe they determined we can sell them PlayStation 4s and then they will still buy a PlayStation 5 later. You know, maybe, when, maybe they the think PS people are going to double dip. The PS4 came out in 2013, right? Correct. Okay, so, yeah, I can see the PS4 are still lasting another year or two. Oh my God, that was nine years ago. Yeah. So God damn. But, I, again, like, th like, this is just a baffling reason to ramp up production on PS4s. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. You'd think, like, they could just figure out how to make PlayStation 5s. <laughs> like, yeah. redesign it in a way that's easier to produce or something, but... Yeah. Somehow they determined PlayStation 4 was a better money-making move for them. I mean, who knows? Maybe yeah, they are exactly. trying to figure out how to redesign the PlayStation 5. I mean, I'm sh they're I'm definitely sure they making an iteration of the PlayStation 5. And they have to, because that thing is gigantic and ugly and <laughs> hopefully they're keeping in mind a way to make it easier to produce yeah i don't know i mean everybody's hurting right now it's it's not just this yeah. isn't a problem unique to the playstation 5 this is a problem globally with with all uh uh yeah all tech supplies in general um yeah so yeah uh, uh the world is in shambles yes meanwhile Microsoft has stopped manufacturing all <laughs> Xbox One consoles. What the fuck? The software giant originally discontinued the One X and Digital One S ahead of the Series X launch, then quietly stopped manufacturing One S uh, Xbox Xbox One S's at the end of 2020, leaving retailers to sell out their remaining stock. To focus production on the Xbox Series X and S, we stopped producing all all Xbox One consoles by the end of 2022, says Sydney Walker, Senior Director of Xbox Console Product Marketing, in a statement to The Verge. Microsoft confirmed, uh, Microsoft's confirmation comes just as Bloomberg reports suggest Sony has plans to end PS4 productions at the end of 2021, but the company will now manufacture more PS4s in 2022. So, 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 uh, I know this is, this is weird, but this makes more sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and so it made sense that they discontinued Xbox One X when yeah. the series came out because that became really confusing because the yeah. One X was more powerful than the than the Series S, but cost more money. Yeah, but played but played worse games. <laughs> that it became really confusing. Um, yeah, but. PlayStation doesn't have a cheaper alternative to the PlayStation 5. The cheaper alternative is the PlayStation 4. Meanwhile, right. Microsoft has fantastic cross compatibility and the Series S is their cheaper alternative to the to the Series X. People still yes. are having a hard time getting Series Xs. It's a little easier than it is the PlayStation 5. But Series S's are way easier to get. Um, and I feel like ramping up production of those is not a big deal. And and I yeah. feel like a lot of people got their hands on that last holiday, uh, this this past holiday. Oh, yeah. So uh, it ended, I think it worked out great for them. And I think that this, this they, th Microsoft determined the best move for us is to dump resources into getting these things out. Because I think they figured it out. I think they figured out the Series S was like a really smart move for them. Yeah. And Microsoft has a history of when the next gen console comes out, they stop production on the on the last gen version. Like they stopped the original Xbox as soon as the 360 came out. The 360 right. was on, like because that was their most successful. That was around for maybe like a few months after the Xbox 1 came out. And yeah, stopping production on the Xbox 1 now is just part of their strategy. Yeah. Uh, again, the cross compatibility is another big factor here because, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter which freaking Xbox you get. You're going to have a great time. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation kind of, uh, screws the pooch on that. They kind of have a really bad situation with cross compatibility. They're trying, oh, yeah. but it's not as good as Microsoft's. They should try better. <laughs> they should try a little better. But... Uh, Yes. I was going to segue into the next. Yeah, PlayStation 3 games reportedly yeah, appearing on PlayStation 5. Cross That's crazy. Compatibility, They're cross uh, compa several. compatible the PlayStation 3 with PlayStation 5. I never would have guessed this. Several PlayStation 3 games are reportedly recently spotted on the PS5 store, causing speculation that the PS5 could get further backwards compatibility. VGC reported that the PS3 game. Dead or Alive 5 briefly listed a display price of seven 
of 799 pounds uh where it was previously re previously redirected users to the PlayStation Now version of the game that's a heavy game uh, ad additionally other users reported similar listings for the PS3 versions of Bejeweled as well as Prince of Persia uh, the Forgotten Sands, and Prince of Persia the Two Thrones, each with their own individual purchase price. However, none of the games were purchasable at these prices on PS5. At the time of writing, IGN could not replicate these findings, which could mean that this was a simple error in the PlayStation 5 store, or that this is potentially a mistaken early release that has now been fixed. I am willing to bet this was just a mistake. <laughs> Because cause they do this shit all the time. There's always weird shit going on with the storefront. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, interestingly, this uh, this accidental listing appears following the discovery of a patent that uh, was filed by PS5 system architect Mark Cerny. The patent titled Backwards Compatibility Through Use of Spoof Clock and Fine Grain Frequency Control could suggest that Sony is working on fur bringing further backwards compatibility to the PlayStation 5. Social media has already begun speculating that this patent could mean Sony has solved at least one of the problems when bringing older PS3 games to next generation consoles. Mark Cerny is a robot. Yes. Backwards true, compatibility this, through the use of spoof clock and fine grain frequency control. Nobody talks like that. If true, <laughs> this would give Sony even more of a catalog to play with after reports that Sony is working on creating an uh, an Xbox Game Pass competitor. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Uh, I, I I think it's it seems like a big mistake to 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 to, to have it in the storefront that early, you know? Yeah. Um. So I'm sure it was a glitch, if anything. Right. But the idea that they are working on ways of getting your back catalog of PlayStation games up and running on this on your current gen system is fantastic weren't IGN, they I didn't, weren't they trying to get rid of uh playstation 3 the, the the storefront the storefront yeah so this seems like just them trying to merge it and then just making a mistake yeah like their their way of like moving it over to the playstation 5 because the right. playstation i don't know how it works because like the playstation 3 store is different from the ps4 store which itself is different from the ps5 store mm-hmm so I saw an, an article on IGN. I didn't read it yet, but the headline said following Activision's following Microsoft's purchase of Activision, we're no longer in a console war. We're in a content war. Mm. And something like this follows suit in that it doesn't matter what system you get. Uh, it, what matters is where you're able to play the games you want to play. So, so that's right. always been the factor in the console wars. Like everybody, the right. first thing everybody asks when a new console comes out is what has the better exclusives. And this generation was kind of the first time I was like, who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> like, like the exclusives really aren't the big deal anymore to me. Yeah. It, it's more about like what's going to give you the experience you want to have. Right. And, you know, as of right now, on the Xbox side of things, they're giving you game pass. Like right. that's the, the big experience you can get. Sony so far has stuck to traditional, you know, this is a new generation. These are the new, the new generation games. These are their exclusive to PlayStation and whatnot. So it'll I, be I think, interesting I, to see if that strategy continues or if they're going to adapt a more Microsoft like approach. That, that That's what it is. It, it's, it's not that, uh, it's not that exclusives didn't matter. It's that the experience is so much better on Xbox that it made the exclusives not a big deal to me. Well, right. let me rephrase that. The the experience is so much better on Microsoft and the exclusives really aren't showing up on PlayStation. So, <laughs> so it made the exclusives really not matter much to me. And then of course, as the chat is reminding me, yes, I still like Nintendo Switch. For the exclusives. I think as as far as exclusives go, Nintendo of all of the consoles, Nintendo has everybody beat. They're the yeah. exclusives that I care about. Uh, which is why I think they'd be a perfect acquisition for Microsoft. <laughs> because if, if if Microsoft needs exclusives, Nintendo's got all of them. <laughs> yeah. 
anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, PlayStation Three. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. Uh, speaking of the Switch, we're getting a custom Nintendo Switch, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. Like, I was excited for a minute, and then I instantly was not. Astroneer just came out on the Switch, and now Switch is coming out on the Astroneer. That is to say, there is a new okay. Switch in an Astroneer design. Hey, it's not an it's not an official design from Nintendo, but a collaboration with Switch customizing pros colorware. You might remember their name from when uh, Nintendo Life took a look at their uh, custom Joy-Con or their NES themed controllers, or when we bemoaned how pricey they were in a rant about Switch customization options. To summarize, Colorware offers some rather enticing customizable Joy-Cons and Switches. And I lost where I was. And now they're making a limited edition run of Astroneer themed Switches to commemorate the game's release. That's all the information available right now, other than these nifty space uh, space Switches being available to give away soon. Co and Colorware has some really awesome stuff, and I've always wanted to get something from Colorware, but they're so yeah. fucking expensive. It's so expensive. It's it's really it it really questions you know like like whether or not yeah. it's worth it. Like like look at how awesome these Joy Cons look, but look, one hundred and fifty dollars, and like that's how much it yeah. is if you even buy them on Etsy. So like I guess that's not really that bad. Uh, but they have such cool stuff. Like, you get a Logitech mouse. You get a freaking Shure MV7, which is not this one. I wish it was this one. Uh, you can customize your own freaking Shure microphone. Um, yeah. Where's the Nintendo Switch? Uh, the uh, Astroneer one? I don't know if it's up. No, the Astroneer one's not up. But, uh, like, this, yeah. this Super Nintendo-themed Nintendo Switch Plus dock, and this is the old one. This isn't even the OLED one. Oh, Six hundred dollars, yeah. and it ships in three yeah. weeks, two to three weeks. This is pretty cool. They have the freaking like uh, I don't, I don't know what you they call this. The D pad the, design, and what do you call the freaking like like the car paint that like changes color? Oh, looks like oil slick. I know, I know what it is, but I don't remember what it's called. It's freaking cool. These are these, and you can customize your own. It's it's freaking awesome, but it's yeah. just it's a lot of money. And and this Astroneer Nintendo Switch is gonna be a lot of money. It's gonna be like five or yeah. six hundred dollars. Iridescent, they're they're saying in in the in the chat. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, that that this is awesome. This Astroneer Switch is awesome until you realize it's gonna be like five or six hundred dollars, and then it's not awesome anymore. I love me a good special edition Nintendo Switch, but uh oh yeah, yeah. I kinda, not for, I kind of wish there were there were more out there, and that they were more readily available. Right. Actually, I'm, no. I take that back. I wish there were more special edition Pro controllers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even just special edition, just like colors other than translucent black. Power A and Hori are making awesome ones. Like like they Power are, A today just just uh just announced like a like a retro looking uh 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 Pikachu one that looked awesome. So they are, yes, but I I'm talking specifically Nintendo made ones. Right, no, I understand. Like, oh wow, this I'm awesome. surprised like Nintendo they have their standard one and then like they'll do one pro controller a year and then that disappears from market within like two weeks. Yeah, they're really screwing the pooch on those. Yeah. Was it Meanwhile, not every other then? every month Microsoft's like, "Oh, here's a new color." Was it PDP? Did I have it wrong this whole time? I don't know. I saw a really cool retro-looking Pikachu design. I'm pretty sure it was Power. I will say though, like Microsoft uh Nintendo, like their third-party support for controllers is like head and shoulders above Sony and Microsoft's. Yeah, I mean, I think Nintendo knows that like you don't really need more than like you don't like Microsoft and Sony uh, or maybe it's just that there's not a lot of demand for third party controllers on Microsoft and uh, on Xbox and PlayStation as much as there is on on Nintendo products. Um, yeah. Or maybe it's because that like Microsoft has a weird proprietary wireless and so does uh, so does Sony. I thought Sony just used Bluetooth. They do, but I think it's like a weird Bluetooth. 
Okay. Like Microsoft, I think there was only wired controllers for like a really long time. Yeah. Like third party wired controllers. I think there's, yeah, I think wired controllers, like third party controllers on Xbox are still wired. Like the right. four that exist. I think there's one. I think, I think power, I, th I think the, the, the power a like fusion one is, is, is wireless, but it's like, yeah. it's like almost the price of a friggin' elite controller. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I put this in here. Waterfield designs. The, the company that makes the Switch case that I use. It's a very nice Switch case. Stupidly expensive because it's like real leather. I really only use it because it they sent it to me and it's stupidly expensive and I feel bougie <laughs> using it. But they're making an analog pocket case and it looks fucking <laughs> sick. It's yeah. $49. So it's kind of a lot. Optional but extras include a carabiner for $3.00. A three eighths inch leather wrist loop for fifteen dollars, and an adjustable sling strap with matching cam lock buckle for twenty dollars. I don't want the strings, the, the 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 sling. Like like he in this video, he like wears it at the end, and it looks like the yeah. freaking Seinfeld uh, man purse episode. <laughs> um, but I this is something I kind of wanted from the analog pocket. I wanted like a yeah, like I I like, like this. I like the hard case, but you can't put games in here. You can only have the game that's on it. Um, yeah. So this has a little pocket where you can put the games in. And I, I, I like the soft cases better. Yeah. It's like more flexible. It, 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 like this, I feel like I feel like it's like knocking around and it's like rigid and it, it feels weird like throwing this in my bag. But I yeah. wouldn't feel so weird having a soft case like that. You know, this is like what we used to have back in the day when we took our Game Boy places. This is yeah. the type of like carrying case we want i want something i was looking on like amazon just for any type of electronics carrying case roughly the same size as the analog pocket that i can use if i buy this right now it won't ship till march 4th Jeez, i think i might get it though but which yeah, what I color mean, should i get march 4th do they, isn't bad do they show the colors by comparison, if you buy an analog pocket right now, you won't get it till later next year. Yeah. They have ballistic nylon, Forza blue, Forza red, and Forza green. I guess ballistic nylon is probably black. Oh, wait, here's the colors. Yeah, yeah black's fine. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Anything else we should talk about? Uh... I don't think so. Do you want to talk about any of this other stuff? I don't think it's uh, really the other news? Yeah, I don't think it's that important. Uh, we'll just hit the bullet points real quick. Uh, the Hitman trilogy is coming to Game Pass. Whoa. So Bob can finally play it. All three games. Um, I don't know about that. Kirby and the Forgotten Lands has a release date now. Of course, I didn't uh, remember what the release it's date March is. It's March 20th? March 25th. March 25th. Oh, yeah. Kirby and the Forgotten Lands coming out March 25th. You mentioned it in the uh, last somebody, video. Somebody ported Tomb Raider 1, the PS1 Tomb Raider 1, to the GBA, and it looks pretty good. That's incredible. Yeah. This is uh, and, Timur Gaglev. No, Ga Gagiev in, uh, on YouTube. This looks freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised it works as well as it does. Yeah. Go watch his video. Yeah. I'll link and in the chat. my tweet of the week, uh, legendary filmmaker and composer John Carpenter thinks Halo Infinite is just the best. <laughs> Halo Infinite is a fun shooter, immersive, beautiful product production design, best of the Halo series. Also, the there music slaps. I mean, the, the orchestral <laughs> stuff is crazy, but if you pop into multiplayer yeah there's this like crazy like it like epic indie thing going on it's like awesome <laughs> um a lot of peers tweeted at him what's your gamer tag john carpenter you trying to play some halo <laughs> <laughs> uh and then i have one story here uh real quick that is uh uh it's from Eurogamer. 
homophobic players upset at LGBT plus toggle and arcade racer buck up and drive. So this game, uh, it has billboards in the game. It's a racing game. It's mm-hmm. an arcade racing game. It has billboards in the game that uh, just have random like ads, like like not real ads, they're like fake ads. And some of right. them have uh, pride flags on them and stuff. And, oh, gasp. And the developer foresaw that people would have a problem with that. So he added a toggle where you can turn them off. However, if you turn them off, it makes all of the f- of the billboards pride flags. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a big fuck you to guys who wanted to turn that off. Uh, good for I, them. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, and p- people put that in like reviews and stuff. They were like, that taco doesn't seem to do anything. And it's like, no, it's, it's doing exactly uh, what there. it was intended to do. Um, anyway, that's all the news. So, all right. We will leave you with the tweet of the week. Tweet of the week, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. I was tempted to make it another one of those Seinfeld ones because there's still a lot of great ones. Oh yeah, those, like the one that we did last week. And I'm so I'm so happy about those. But this is from uh, Kevin H. Bell. He bites Italians, and it's like a goat, and it says like "Don't feed the goat." But the guy's making the <laughs> Italian hand in the in the picture, so it looks oh like yeah, he's, looks like he's trying to bite an Italian person. Yeah, that's that's it. funny. That's all we got. All right. Uh, let's read some notifications real quick. We got Thrill House yes. with 100 bits who says they would make a killing on idiots if they brought back the few, the fantastic line. I am an idiot. What's the fantastic line? That was Nintendo. Remember the Nintendo 64? They came out with all those translucent colored uh, versions of the console. Oh, that was called Funtastic? Fantastic, yes. I don't know if you saw, but along those lines, um, retro fighters who make the the Brawler sixty four controllers, uh huh, they are coming out with a Brawler sixty four in the same extreme green as our Nintendo sixty four controller from when we were kids. Shit. Yeah, you should check the PO box. <laughs> if they're making that, you gotta check the PO box. <laughs> All right, I'll. I'll I'll try to go this week. I have a very busy week. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been, it's been a long time. This this style is back. I mean, people were saying that about IMAX too recently. That we need to start seeing some translucent IMAX again. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, now we got those IMAX in like all those different colors. Mm-hmm. Why not just make one of them kind of clear? <laughs> and we also got Benny. Hi, Benny. With four months, the most goaded podcast. Thanks, Benny. Benny is a. Is a clips video editor supreme. Uh, anyway, now we're going to talk to you people real quick. Yes. First, we're going to talk to everyone who left a comment over on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Uh, first, we got Stir Sticks Burke who says, Will, did you hear anything about the discourse around the Hawkeye show? Apparently, they based the style and story directly on one of the comic runs one of my favorite comic runs of all time. Yes. Uh, and then didn't credit those artists at all. They also didn't pay those artists or ask permission. But I don't know if they technically need to since Marvel owns the IP. Seems like crediting was the least they could do, though. Yeah, so this is a very thorny subject. Uh, I did hear about it. It's like the big news story when the show came out. And it's this has been something that's going on because Ed Brubaker, who created The Winter Soldier has said, Marvel doesn't pay me for the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. Um, Marvel and DC as well do not have to pay the creators anything when their stories and characters and whatnot get adapted to other media because they work under what's called a work-for-hire contract, which basically means... Marvel and DC will pay the writer and the artist for that story and that's it. They don't they don't have to pay they're just being paid for what for that story at that moment. And the unfortunate problem is this has been going on since comics began. Nowadays it's a little better 
because they do they do get credit on the show. They get credit to an extent on the shows, um, and they do get compensated. Apparently, DC is better at compensating writers and artists than Marvel is. Um, but it's still not as ideal as it possibly can be. From my understanding, Matt Fraction, the writer of this particular Hawkeye run, was a creative consultant on the show. His name is in the credits. David Aja, the primary artist and the guy who like made this whole visual aesthetic that the show was based on, was not consulted. And he was only paid after, I think, the show debuted on Disney+. Plus. And, uh, and, and that's not counting all the other artists who worked on this, like Matt Hollingsworth, who was the colorist, who I would argue really defined the look. Uh, Annie Wu, who uh, did a lot of the Kate Bishop specific issues. Uh, Francesco Francavia, who did a couple of issues. Javier Polito, who did a couple of issues. Um, none of those people were credited on Hawkeye. I, I, I think David Aja really got fucked with this whole thing because yeah. this is like. He did such an incredible job, and I feel like he really didn't like get utilized at all after this. And then they just no. basically stole his vibe for the show. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, things are better now than they used to be, but they're still not ideal. And I think because of uh, David Aja, because of Ed Brubaker, um, because of uh, other writers and artists coming forward about this, more people are aware of it. And so hopefully... I mean, maybe not at Marvel, because, like, Disney doesn't seem to care. But, like, in general, I think publishers, when things get adapted, they'll be more conscious of paying their staff. There was a big controversy uh, with the Spider-Man movies with uh, Steve Ditko. Uh, because Stan Lee was credited for the Spider-Man. Like, on screen, like on the screen, it would say Spider-Man created by uh, Stan Lee. Well, uh, that's a different story. Because it would say Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Steve Ditko, however, was an insane man. <laughs> and he would bitch and moan and complain that he never got the recognition he deserved for Spider-Man. Meanwhile, he would get checks sent to him from Marvel regularly and never cash them. <laughs> they would just sit in a pile on his desk. Didn't he have to fight for the credit, though? He always had the credit, but he he wanted Stan to acknowledge him mm. not as a co-creator of Spider-Man, as creator of Spider-Man. Ah, okay. Never mind. He's an insane yeah. person. He's, he is an insane... Like, look, we can sit here and we talk about how important Steve Dicko was to Spider-Man all day, and he was. If you, if you dig in the Wolf Den archives, I have a video on it, but he was insane. Yes. <laughs> um okay. Anyway. Yes. Uh we also have Diana Lopez who says, Missed your podcast. Welcome back. Well, thanks. We're glad to Thank be back. You. Uh Hira Hirai Shin 3307 says people expecting a Pokemon Breath of the Wild when in reality it is a Pokemon monster hunter. True. True. That is what it is. Uh, also, it looks like from the last trailer, you you the Pokemon that you capture also fight with you. So you are fighting alongside the Pokemon. So kind of, it's, I mean, well, yeah, I guess you do that in Monster Hunter also. Like, you have the cats and dogs fighting with you. Oh, well, maybe it, it, Monster Hunter is just the way they do Skyrim over there. <laughs> it looks like Pokemon Dokev, you know, that, that K-pop game? You capture the, no. the you capture the, 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 the creatures, and then you fight other creatures with those creatures. So Pokemon. <laughs> Melon says, hey, I know uh, us YouTube commenters are garbage, but we're not literal garbage. Uh, listen, not all of you, but a lot no. of you. <laughs> not all a lot. A lot of the YouTube comments are garbage. Not all of you, but there are a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, the Cosmic Skeleton says, I understand why you think Elden Ring looks the same as Dark Souls. It's because you haven't played Dark Souls. I have. I have videos on it. Yeah. And I can tell because you mentioned the fact that it's four player as if that wasn't in Dark Souls, not trying to be mean, but starting things that, stating things that might be helpful to know. Uh, yeah, I just didn't know I, that. I had to look into that. I always assumed the Dark Souls multiplayer 
was basically you can see the ghosts of other players in your game and like they can leave hints for so, you so i thought that too and that is the case uh because yeah. when we we one of the first videos on the wolf den channel is me and will playing the original dark souls together yes uh he held the guide while i played the game <laughs> um and uh that's what was in the game was was the was people trying to troll you into into jumping off a cliff and stuff um yeah but i had this conversation i had a little fight with jackson because jackson told me that dark souls has always had multiplayer where you could play with other people and i was like that's right. bullshit there's no way and then i looked it up and it is true actually that yes you hmm. can the same way me and jackson played the remake of dark souls you used to be able to do that uh, or the re what was it demon souls the remake of demon souls you could apparently you always yeah. could have uh joined another person's game and played with them uh so i didn't know that you learn something new every day still don't like the franchise um that's it that's it for last week yes. real quick in the chat i gotta pee and we're late we got so. some uh super chats super chats will will had a stroke yes uh whatever whatever this equivalent is <laughs> I don't see any. Uh, I thought we did. Never mind. I lied. We got we got some some highlights like Jordan, who says we know how you feel about Pokemon, Bob, but will you be picking up this one? Absolutely. Oh, I got to pre-order it. Never pre-order games. Yes. I'm a, I'm an exception because <laughs> I'm getting I'm trying to get it early. Yeah. Um, Uh, anyway. what did I say? Coat rags. Uh, can you teach Wood how to interact with his chat, not just his subs and donos? No. <laughs> he gets a lot more subs and donos than me, so uh, yeah, I can't teach him anything. He's he's uh, it, I don't know what it's like with that many viewers. You know, it might be a lot harder yeah. to interact with the normies. We try to give everybody a fair shake here, but it is it is when the chat's moving fast and you see flare in the chat, your eyes just go right to it. So right now, first time chatters and people who highlight their comments are the ones that I'm going to see the, the easiest. Yeah. Or if you at Wolfden in the chat, that also becomes easier to see. Yeah. So you don't have to give money, but but uh, highlighting the comment is probably the easiest way to get me to look at it. Yeah. Um. Like Sukiyomi, who is not a subscriber, says hi, Bob. Hello. <laughs> uh, and something uh, about beans says, "Hey, Will. Thoughts? Thoughts on uh, Moon Knight trailer and comic recommendations? Uh, did you see the Moon Knight trailer? You did. Yeah, yeah it looks fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looks so good. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited for that. Uh, comic recommendations. Uh, I would say check out Jeff Lemire's run." on the comic that was collected into one nice trade you can look and they're coming out with a collection of brian michael bendis and alex malieve's work on moon knight so check that out i i must warn everybody moon knight is very weird <laughs> so i hope you're ready for weird stuff that's what i'm excited about yeah. it looks like batshit crazy yeah uh explain the popularity of boba fett i can't he's 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 like He's really cool looking. He's like Sonic. Yes. He's a great but, character design. And there's just that nothing bit. else. <laughs> he is he is the best action figure ever made. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. The thing I think the thing about Boba Fett is he's a he's a great look. And mm -hmm. then the fact that he had like maybe ten minutes of screen time total in the original trilogy just made everybody's imaginations run wild. And I think the problem is there there became a lot of expanded universe material that fed into that but n like never really went beyond of man is Bo isn't boba fett cool yeah like I, I feel like that's one of the reasons why the book of boba fett is not as good as the mandalorian <laughs> yeah like like part of what made boba fett cool was that he was mysterious and he didn't really know what was going on yeah. you know uh yeah. some of the expanded universe stories kind of like 
touched on the legend of Boba Fett, like people talking about him and like, oh, he's over there, but we still don't know yeah. much about him. Is he alive or not? Oh, yeah. and and that's what made it more cool was it was still mysterious. But now here he is the, the main character of the show. It's not as fucking cool anymore because he's not as yeah. mysterious. So yeah. it kind of kind of ruined the mystique there. Yeah. And, and he takes off his helmet too much and he talks too damn much. <laughs> and Tamura Morrison agrees. He said, I'm talking too much in the show. <laughs> I don't like talking. Let me just. Say. I, don't, I don't like talking. Um. Now everyone's highlighting. Uh. Sui Kagura says, and when everyone will be highlighting, only the non-highlighted chats will stand out. Yeah. Hi, Bob. Will you wish me a happy birthday it's tomorrow? Light lifted lightning. Happy birthday tomorrow. It only gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you really want Bob to re see your message, type seppuku with an exclamation point before it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Tetra shot. Yo, thanks for the tier ones. Oh, you got to give it a sub. Oh, I missed that. Uh, we got Ferris Rex with a resubscription of 15 months in a row and two anonymous gifted subs. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's read a couple more and then get yeah. out of here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the WVR Lord, how do you feel about the Insomniac Wolverine game? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot that's happening. I think that's yeah. awesome. That's such, I, I, that was like, the best uh playstation direct they've had in years when yeah. they announced that yeah. and uh, and some other stuff that that'll definitely be interesting to see um because we haven't had an x-men game in general in a very long time so and it'd be curious to see how they handle wolverine after two excellent spider-man games the Laurelin Villager says, have you ever thought of doing an episode of the podcast from the studio with all the gang there? That is actually a really good idea. We should do that. We should well, have like all of the, the Wolf Den team together. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully your uh, your computer will work <laughs> by then. And I, the I, I swear to God, like I, I was fucking playing a Halo. First of all, hey, I turn up, I, I opened halo and my computer restarted that. And this is a brand new computer. Then I, yeah. then I, then I freaking uh it restarted i opened halo and it gave me a dll error and then it opened anyway then i went to go i got in the call with you opened obs and obs gave me a dll error then i tried to reinstall that dll and then uh it didn't work and then i tried to repair my computer and the whole fucking thing died now tomorrow yeah. i have to go to the studio when i'm supposed to be working on a video and redo my whole computer the thing i wanted to do the video on and now i'm gonna be all backed up I'm really trying not to release videos on Fridays anymore. I'm always shooting for Thursday, and then I just things happen, and I end up freaking life, putting them life out. Life happens. Friday. Zach Davis says, "This is why I'm a console person." Me too. Yeah. I want to. This this week's video is supposed to be about how I got this. I got this NZXT computer that is kind of like a knockoff Xbox Series X because it's mm -hmm. tiny. But oh yeah, yeah, I know it. It kind of plays games exactly like an xbox series x and in some cases worse than an xbox series x except the computer was sixteen hundred dollars Jesus! so like i got a lot of things to say and i'm gonna piss off a lot of pc gamers um oh, but it's a great you piss off pc gamers no it's a great computer it's it did everything i wanted it to do and more until today where i just fucking had enough um also, I got a lot of problems with my MacBook. I'm I'm really disappointed in my MacBook too. I oh, might do no. a, I might do a personal channel video ranting about my MacBook. Dude, don't say that. I was just pricing one out today. I I've my ex I have weird glitches in Premiere exports, and you can tell in the intro to last week's video. Uh, every once like I have to export videos at like 96 uh, megabits per second, and yeah. uh. And sometimes there'll just be a weird glitch with like effects and stuff. It like it doesn't render right sometimes. <sighs> anyway, uh, that's it for my rant. 
some rye bread says that was recalled a while back i assume bob has a newer version of it though. yeah yeah the nzxt computer got recalled because it, w it would catch fire <laughs> but yeah i assume that mine's fixed um yeah. anyway guys thanks for hanging out this late. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den, except for today because Bob Computer exploded. If you yes. can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I took like a week off of streaming. I'm going to try to stream a lot more. I probably can't tomorrow because I got to work on a video. Uh, I will hopefully stream Thursday. I'll do my best. Uh... But I'm here now. I've been all over the place for the past couple of weeks. I miss lattes so fucking much and all of my <laughs> nice food over here in, in beautiful Williamsburg. I missed all of that. I'm so happy to be back to all of that. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll be uh, doing a few more streams uh, later this week, but I, I probably can tomorrow. Anyway, uh, I don't know who's on. Um, I don't know. Uh, fucking AJ. How about that? There Everybody go. go watch AJ. He's playing Smash. They usually do open lobbies. You can probably play with them. Uh, go say hi to AJ, and we will see you later. Thanks for being here for the podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Pretty, I'm pretty out. Okay, no, the Yo. thing was.